Hey, 30 out 6 John here, and today what I'm going to be talking about are the best sidearms for protection against bears. This includes black bears, but mostly has to do with brown bears and grizzly bears. I hope you enjoy this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already, and um, keep watching. When the 357 Magnum was introduced in the mid 30s, um, it was almost a revolutionary cartridge, the first Magnum cartridge. It was used to hunt by the, uh, by the grandson of the founder of uh, Smith & Wesson, Douglas B. Wesson, to hunt animals all over the world, including brown bears, grizzly bears. To my knowledge, that was the first time a handgun was used to hunt and kill brown grizzly bears like this buffalo bore 180 grain hard cast lead flat nose it's going about 1350 feet per second from a four inch barrel uh, the swift a frames a good bullet also that's like a nozzle partition a 357 magnum is considered a little bit too light for brown and grizzly bears but I do know some fairly experienced Alaskan outdoorsmen, and they carry a 357 Magnum revolver. One good thing about a 357 Magnum revolver is that there are, are a lot of choices. You do want something that has like a medium or a large frame. You don't want a small frame 357 Magnum shooting heavy bear loads. It will just uh, batter the gun. It won't be comfortable to shoot. Something like this uh, Ruger GP100 with a 4-inch barrel, maybe a 6-inch barrel. Smith & Wesson has quite a few good 357 Magnum revolvers. Something like this uh, L-frame would be very good. There's been so many bears shot in defense with a 44 Magnum over the decades that it is just the standard cartridge used. A lot of people say that a 44 Magnum is an old last century cartridge, but the 44 Magnum has worked, does work, and will continue to work. For ammo, you probably want something like a heavy hard cast lead, like this cast performance 320 grain hard cast lead bullet or uh, this is a 300 grain hard cast lead bullet 310 grain hard cast lead a lot of people are uh, starting to use all copper or copper alloy bullets sort of like a hard cast lead except it's all copper those seem to work good they're lighter so um, i'm not really sure how good they are but uh, they seem to be a viable option there's also extreme penetrator type bullets sort of has a Phillips head X on the front of the nose. I've never used them. Uh, I don't know of any reports of people using them. They seem to penetrate okay. I guess those will be okay for uh, for a bear. For 44 Magnum sidearms, the uh, Smith & Wesson model 29, or in this picture here, a 629, is an excellent choice. It was the uh, first pistol chambered in 44 Magnum. The Ruger Blackhawk, or in this case the Super Blackhawk, was a very popular firearm when it was introduced. Taurus has several uh, double action revolvers. This is the uh, Raging Hunter. They also have the uh, Tracker model. and They're okay also. I know a few people that use them. Now the only revolver that I would say for people to stay away from unless they really want to train and practice with it is a uh, Smith & Wesson Airlite in 44 Magnum. It's a, I think scandium framed. It's a very lightweight revolver. Everyone who ever shoots one doesn't like it. They say they'd rather shoot a 500 Smith & Wesson than a, a lightweight 44 Magnum like this. Most reloading manuals have a special section for the 45 Colt. If you're shooting it out of a TC Contender or a Ruger Blackhawk. Also, you can buy uh, 
ammunition that's rated just for the Ruger Blackhawk or stronger single action revolvers. You don't want to shoot this type of ammo in a old um, Colt single action type revolver. The 41 Magnum was introduced a few years after the uh, 44 Magnum, early 60s. Um, it is a powerful cartridge. I know that uh, back in the uh, 80s and 90s, the 41 Mag was popular because you could buy a Ruger Blackhawk cheaper than a Super Blackhawk or a Red Hawk. I know a lot of people that carried 41 Remington Magnum Blackhawks. Um, I know a few people who have killed brown bears with a 41 Remington Magnum. So it is a useful cartridge, sort of fallen by the wayside, but Ruger still catalogs guns uh, for the 41 Rem Mag, and uh, so does Smith & Wesson. When talking about the uh, big bore revolvers, like the uh, 454 Casol, 500 Smith & Wesson, 475 Lion Ball, you have to realize that these are throwing uh, bullets and at velocities very similar to the old time 1870, 1880 Buffalo guns. As a comparison, this right here is a 420 grain hard cast lead for 4570. This is a 395 grain hard cast lead for a 460 Smith & Wesson or a 454 Casol. So they're sort of on a different power level than a uh, 44 Magnum, uh, certainly more than a 10 millimeter. The 454 console has been around since the late 50s, early 60s. Uh, it finally got semi approval in uh, about uh, 2000 or 1998. And that's when it really became popular. The 475 line ball was introduced about 1987. This was actually uh, a couple of years after Line Ball introduced the 500 Line Ball. The 500 Line Ball sort of has dropped by the wayside. The 500 Smith & Wesson sort of overtook it. But the 475 Line Ball is still around. The 500 Smith & Wesson was introduced about 2003. It uh, right now holds the title as the most powerful handgun cartridge. The 480 Ruger was introduced by Ruger and Hornady in uh, 2003 also. Uh, it is just a shortened uh, 475 line ball. It also works at a somewhat lower pressure than the 475 line ball. The 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum was introduced about 2005. It is uh, basically a longer 454 Casol. Uh, the big advantage of this gun, besides it being very powerful, is that you could also shoot 454 Casol or 45 Colt through it. There are other big bore revolver cartridges, but these are the main ones. You get involved in the other ones, they're pretty much all hand loading uh, rounds. Sidearms for the uh, big bore revolvers include, of course, Freedom Arms. Uh, model 83 single action revolver. You can get this in the uh, 454 Casol, 475 line ball. Line ball still has this custom shop open, making uh, custom revolvers in uh, 475 and 500 line ball. They build these up on uh, Ruger uh, Super Blackhawk frames. Magnum Research makes the uh, BFR single action revolver. Long cylinder version of this uh, handgun, it, it is a very heavy gun, even with a short barrel, it's a heavy gun. The shorter cylinder versions uh, is much more like a regular single action revolver. Magnum Research has been making these guns for quite a few years now. They've uh, proven themselves. The single action revolver can be shot fast. Cowboy action shooters do it all the time. For Powerful, high recoil loads. Uh, 
There's a challenge out there. If you Google uh, the 454 Casole challenge, where they shoot five 454 Casole loads in three or four seconds. Uh, that's pretty fast, and, and um, it can be done. It just requires some training. I know of a lot of experienced Alaskans that still use and carry powerful single-action revolvers. Still a very viable choice for bush carry dealing with problem bears as a sidearm. Single action revolvers are slow to reload. In actual bear encounters for defensive situations, it's rare to use more than five rounds. Ruger makes the Super Red Hawk in a 454 Casol and 480 Ruger. They make this, uh, the Alaskan version with a two and a half inch barrel. To me, it's a little bit too short, but I know a fair amount of people that use these for uh, backcountry hiking and things like that. The one advantage the Ruger has is uh, in the 480 Ruger caliber and 454 Casole calibers, the cylinders hold six rounds. Uh, virtually every other firearm out there holds only five rounds in those calibers. And of course, Smith & Wesson makes the 500 Smith & Wesson and 460 Smith & Wesson. You can get these from a 4-inch barrel up to, I guess, an 8-inch barrel. Um, I know a few people that carry the 4- and 5-inch uh, Smiths. They seem to be fine uh, firearms. I do know a lot of people that carry the 10 millimeter automatic with uh, heavy bear loads in it. It has been used for bear protection multiple times. Uh, one reason why the 10 millimeter automatic became so popular isn't due to that it's easier to shoot or you can hold more ammo. It's just due to economics and the price. Um, revolvers, especially the big bore revolvers, really priced themselves out of the market. Revolvers anymore cost a thousand dollars plus. Uh, you could buy a Glock 10 millimeter for about six hundred and fifty, seven hundred dollars. Uh, these days, there's plenty of 10 millimeter ammo available for bear protection. You do want to, you know, be uh, make sure you make good choices. Basically, you want a heavy bullet and you want a non-expanding bullet. You want to penetrate deep and break bones. For handguns for uh, 10 millimeter auto, of course, the uh, classic is the Glock Model 20 10 millimeter. This one here is sort of uh, had the market all to themselves for a long time. A couple of things you have to know about a Glock 20 10 millimeter. The barrel, they use a, a polygon type rifling. Um, it sort of causes leading in the barrel. You have to be real careful when you're shooting lead bullets out of a Glock. A lot of people say you don't have to, but I know a lot of people have Glock 10 mils there. Sort of careful with it. I have seen Glock 10 millimeters blow up, actually tear the, the frame in half. Uh, it did injure the shoot, shooter a little bit. It was shooting factory 10 millimeter ammo. It was a hard cast lead type bullet. So you do have to make sure that you keep the barrel of a Glock 20 clean from lead and anything with your when you're shooting and you hear a weird report or anything like that immediately stop shooting. I'm just mentioning this because uh, a lot of people say it's not an issue. People say it is an issue. It just has to be something that everyone who shoots a Glock 10 mil be aware of. Several manufacturers of 1911s that make them in a 10 millimeter Kibber makes them, uh, Ruger makes them, I think Springfield makes 10, mil 10 millimeter autos, Springfield Armory makes uh, several 10 millimeter autos in their XDM platform. Smith & Wesson just introduced their M&P 10 millimeter maybe half a year ago. I don't know that much about it. I have seen them on the shelves at gun stores. SIG just introduced their P320 in 10 millimeter. Well, it's pretty clear that people would rather shoot automatic pistols, and I understand that. 
Also, revolvers have priced themselves out of the market, although they are chambered for much more powerful rounds. Several of my acquaintances have stopped carrying the 10 millimeter, and they're either carrying a different type of automatic pistol, or they went back to carrying revolvers. The 460 Roland is just a, a 45 ACP case that's lengthened about an eighth of an inch, but the overall length of the cartridge is the same. So it uses the same frame as a, a 45 ACP gun, same magazines, but since the case is a little bit longer, it won't chamber in the barrel. So there are several companies out there that uh, sell 460 Roland guns that convert them uh, or they get a conversion kit. Buffalo Boar makes ammo for it. They can't convert a Glock uh, 45 ACP to a 460 Roland. Usually there has to be a big muzzle brake compensator at the end of the barrel. They can also convert other firearms. Here's an FN. They convert it to 460 Roland. The only real Magnum automatic out there now is the Desert Eagle. They've been making them for a long time, 30 years. They're chambered in the 50 Action Express, the 44 Magnum. They're pretty good guns. They are expensive. They are heavy to carry. I've never actually seen anyone carry one out in the bush. Anyhow, that's all that I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this discussion on uh, bear protection sidearms. Uh, if you like this type of content, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. That's all that I have for today, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day and uh, stay safe.